on a different level. One thing I remember vividly as maybe one of my, my grand memories is on the last evening of the cruise, there was a talent show for all the guests, and Graham came up to me and said, I just signed up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> She says. I remember thinking how brave she was to perform in front of all of these strangers. And when she finally got up and performed her tap dance in her royal blue sequin top and her black tights and her tap shoes, I felt like the proudest per person in the Atlantic Ocean. She was so fearless and so talented and prepared. I never even knew she packed her tap shoes. <laughs> Following that cruise and prior to her stroke, Graham and I had many a dinner at her house, many of which were casserole dinners, of which she was the queen. And I remember wondering if Graham ever got lonely living alone in that big old house on Marlin Way. My friend Jen and I moved into Graham's a year later. It's like coming home to a big hug from her. The colors may have changed, but that house is still that nook of Graham. It's a blessing to have been able to live where she lived much of her life, to know her neighbors and wake up in her room and feel close to her in that way. In the last seven and a half years, my Graham has been an example of grace, dignity, strength, and love. Witnessing her brave spirit, positive attitude, no matter what she may have felt inside, is an incredible gift that I will never forget and hope to emulate every day of my life. I will cherish the word birthday because she said it many times following her stroke. And it makes me smile to recall her voice, the roll of her eyes, knowing that it wasn't what she meant to say, but laughing anyway, <laughs> gracefully. I will miss her every day of my life. And may her dance car always be full. And may her memory be eternal. Thank you.